see the shift. When you click on the shift, you have the break time, you have the time to go here, and you have the shift. Okay. So now, the first thing you need to do is to set the break time. It's very important to set the break time if you have a break time. And when setting the break time, there are two principles that apply. We have the auto deduct break time and the required point break time. So, what does these two options mean? These two calculation types of our break time, what do they mean? Okay. So, if I choose an auto deduct, it means automatically, if, for example, I am meant to have a duration of 60 minutes, one hour as a break time, and I'm meant to work from sign in from eight to five, right? Automatically, a one hour break time is deducted from the number of hours I'm meant to work. So, eight to five uh, takes out eight one hour, rated accordingly. So, if I'm meant to do um, eight hours in, in a day running from eight to five, or nine hours in a day running from twenty to five, what I would see in the system automatically is eight hours or seven hours accordingly because the one hour of break time has been automatically deducted. That's when you set your break time to auto deduct. Start time 12, end time one. You can set it accordingly, however you want to set it. But if it's on required punch, that means every time I want to go for a break, I need to go and punch. Okay, I need to go and punch. That's okay, I'm taking break. I can split my break accordingly. 20 minutes, 10 minutes, depending on the rule, the punch setting that we set here. So now, if it's auto deduct, there is a rule setting here. Duplicate punch period is going to be rule based. Punch state type, you can set it as no because it's, it's auto deduct, right? Not required. But if you are using the punch required, you need to make it yes. Okay? Here is rule base. And when I go to require punch setting, this is where you set how you want your punch to be captured. Multiple punch, you click yes. If you want the staff to be able to break their, uh, split their break into different sessions. So for example, if I'm entitled to a one hour break, I can decide to take 20 minutes and split it in three. I can do that. If I have a two-hour break in a day and I want it uh, evenly split or whatever, I can do that accordingly. Then now I will set my minimum break time here. So if, for example, I'm splitting the break, one-hour break to, uh, I, I want an average of 10 minutes that the staff cannot take anything less than 10 minutes per break time. I set that here. If I want 20 minutes per break time, that means I will take my break time thrice. Since I have one hour break, I said that here. Early in, want to calculate as over time, you said that here. Late in, want to calculate as over time, you said that there. Okay. So once you've done that, you confirm accordingly. So in this case, I'm going to use an auto deduct. If there's no if break does not apply, you don't need it, you don't need it. You can just you can just ignore, right? You can just ignore accordingly. So after we've created our break time, the next thing we need to do is go to timetable. Timetable. By default, you have your default timetable that is uh, being displayed. You can either use your default timetable or you can create a timetable. Okay. So I would like to add a normal timetable. Note, we have different types of timetable. We have a normal timetable and we have a flexible timetable, which I will explain during the course of this session. So let's assume I'm using a normal timetable, okay? And then my check-in time is eight. So I set that accordingly, check-in time eight. Check-in start time, very important. Check-in start time is at what time can people start checking in? And of course, you know, for those of us who live in Lagos, uh, we usually come to work early because of the fear of traffic is the beginning of wisdom, right? So we leave our houses uh, early and uh, come to the office sometimes as more, more, more us come to the office as early as four or five and, you know, just so we can beat traffic, we don't want to be stuck. So if I come in by five, I should be able to check in so that I don't forget. So that's what check-in start, uh, check start time mean. So if I set four, that means as early as 4 a.m. when the staff coming, you can check in accordingly. 
checking end time. Checking end time is at what time does can it start be cut off from checking in? So most times I like setting checking end time to just before the checkout start time, just because you know so that you're able to capture all your reports accordingly. So you know those who are late, who are terribly late. So for example, the staff is late, just come into the office for an hour and wants to clock out, and so you can get the accurate report of how how terribly late the staff is. So most times I like to set it just an hour or so before the checkout time begins. Okay. So for this I can set in let's say 18 or let's say uh 16. 100, that's about four o'clock. Work day. Work days, you know. I mean the number of days you have as a work day is one. Work day is one, okay? Set that accordingly. Then check out time. So check out time if I'm closing by eight to five. So that's five. That would be seventeen hundred. Check out start. Of course, the same thing applies. Seventeen hundred check out start time too. So your check out start. Your check out start time must be the same. Cannot be lower than your check out. Uh, check out time. Very important. Your check in time can be way earlier than your check out. Uh, 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 your checking uh, start time, but your checkout start time ought to be at least either at par with or later than. Let's if you want to set sixteen. Let's see if it will fly. So you can set that. You can set. An, an hour early, that's if you're giving early leave. You can just set it here or you can set it in the uh, uh, rule setting, which we'll also see. Okay. So, 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 so let's, let's set this. Check out end. When can someone stop be, be cut off from checking out? So, most times I like setting it to the end of the day, just because, you know, we have people who are, because of the fear of traffic, also stays back in the office till late at night. So, so it's only appropriate to give them that benefit of doubt if if your organization uh, allows. Okay, so set that accordingly. And the next is break time setting. So if you want your break time to apply, you come in here and you click on break time. The previous break time we created accordingly. You click on it. On schedule time, early in. Do not calculate. So this is where we set the schedule time. So if you want to capture any uh, in as over time, you can set it here. Calculate as work time. Calculate as weekday. Calculate as week of over time. Calculate as holiday over time. Depend on the uh, principle you want to use to apply. Okay. Then let out too. If you want to also calculate it as over time, this is where you set that parameters accordingly. So if, for example, I'm saying calculate as work time, I will set. The maximum number of early leave that will be calculated as the minimum, rather, the minimum number of early leave that must be calculated as over time. So, if, for example, I say calculate as over time, and I'm saying for you to calculate as over time, it must be up to an hour, that's 60 minutes. It's very important for you to say that. The same thing also applies to your late out. If you want to calculate as over time, you must ensure that you set the average time, okay, minimum time. That's if you're calculating. And most times, for me, I usually do not calculate. That's if the uh, organization do not have over time accordingly. Okay? Then, for more uh, robust over time setting, you set your overtime here. Depend on work time, depends on over time. Okay? So, if you're saying depend on work time, you set the over time level. The first one is two hours. So, after you've worked your normal eight hours in a day, and you now work two extra hours, it's level one over time. After you work your uh, normal hours for the day and you work four hours, level two. After you work your normal hours for the day and you work six hours, level three. Right? So you can set that accordingly, depending on your overtime level. Okay? That's if you're setting overtime. Then, once that has been done, you move to your rule setting. Another important area when you're setting your time table is this rule setting. So now, clocking required, of course, is yes. Clock required is yes. 
allow late in set your grace period. So you're giving everyone 15 minutes grace or five minutes grace or two minutes grace or whatever grace period that applies to the organization accordingly, okay? Allow early out. You can send to it late in just to flip the case in this scenario. So allow early out by 10 minutes, by 30 minutes, by 15 minutes or whatever applies to the organization, okay? Okay. Punch interval type. Punch interval type should be rule based. Very important. Punch state type. Punch state type. Depending on what you have on your device, this is another important thing to note. Punch state type. If, for example, you you want uh, staff to be able to choose their punch state on the device, or you automatically set and automatically switch punch state. You can click yes. But if it's a dynamic shift, whereby you have multiple uh, multiple uh, shifts, some people come in by this time and close by this time, and they have shifts that interlock with different punch time. So most times, in that case, it's best to put no in this in that case. That's why you have multiple shifts in a day. Put no. So that means it's going to pick the rule base based on the schedule you've been assigned to as a staff. That is what now govern that rule base, not based on the punch. But for you to be able to do that, you need to set, you need to turn off your punch state on the device you're adding accordingly. Please note that for you to use multiple sheet uh, parameter and pick your report accordingly, you need to turn your punch state at no. And on the device, you need to turn off punch states. You need to turn off punch states on the uh, time attendance device accordingly okay so once that is done to have this setting is automatically set depending on your start time and your end time so once you set all that parameters give it a name let's call this test session So, created our timetable accordingly. Okay, so we created. Sorry, should be a timetable, not a sheet. Please, my apologies. Timetable. So once we've set our timetable, note we've applied our break time to our timetable. So now we need to uh, apply our timetable to sheet. So now we go to shift and we add a shift. Okay. So now to add a shift, we have the timetable we created showing here. Hmm? Let's call this shift test session shift. Now we come in here and assign this timetable to the shift. Units, what is our cycle? How many weeks do we want to apply? How many months do we want to apply? If it's day, if it's week, if it's months, you can assign accordingly, depending on the uh, nature of the organization you're setting the solution for. So if you're using a week, for example, a week seems to, seems to be the most um, easily uh, adopted, widely adopted, and Units, right? So now I set a sheet for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Why for Saturday and Sunday they are not working? So I put week off, week off. Okay. So and I can have different cycle according to depending on how I want my cycle. Okay. So if I want to have a uh, one month cycle, I can change that accordingly. I can set different timetable based on the timetable I've created. I can apply it accordingly. So this uh, becomes very handy when you're setting uh, a rotating a rotor sheet. So if, for example, uh, on the first week of the month, I'm meant to do a normal uh, timetable. 
in the second week, I'm meant to do a different time table. I just go in there accordingly and I set. Okay. Set a different timetable accordingly. Right? So it's very important to you to use that. Okay, so I believe we've gotten that. So with that being done, we confirm. So we have our shift 